In a time where the world is upside down, where we are scared, and every one of our institutions is questioned, one event stands up giving hope to every person on this planet. That is the Poutine Cup. The Poutine Cup is back in NHL 21 as we look to find which province is the best at hockey. We are now in the third edition of the tournament after Ontario won in 2017 and BC won in 2016. And after saying that, just kind of wow, I have been gone for uh, quite a long time. I'll have a video kind of more talking about um, my life and stuff like that if you care out later. But yes, this tournament is for the Poutine Cup. All teams that can field a roster of active players that play in the NHL, AHL, ECHL, or even the Ersta Liga in Hungary are eligible. No unsigned junior players. This will be a bracket tournament with West versus East Canada. The seeds will be determined by the teams overall in game. This is one game elimination, all results final. Eight teams made our cut. And since I made this in NHL 21's free 10 hour trial, all teams will be represented by an existing in game team. All right, let's get into the rosters. First up, we got the boys from BC. There was a lot of good young talent on this team, but as we can see, a lot of their stars from the previous years are starting to fall off. Mon Lucic, Ryan Johansson, Kyle Turris. There's been some struggles there. Defense, they're pretty good at. Great mix of veterans and young players again. A lot of offensive first guys. Then you got Carey Price in net, and that rating is a bit, bit overrated. Taylor Hall makes his long-awaited return to wearing an Edmonton Oilers jersey. This team has kind of like a really like true NHL roster feel. Like you got a first, second, third, and fourth line. Like it's all there. There's no like stars down there really. The same goes for defense. Again, like a very traditional NHL team setup. In net, the heart of their team is there with Carter Hart. Finally, Alberta has a good goaltender in this series. Manitoba flies in next despite not having an airport. Pretty good offense. Again, kind of more looks like a traditional NHL team. Got some young good players coming up like Cody Glass, Brett Howden. And defense, you have Duncan Keefe still holding it down. And overall, a really good young defense. Like, great players all around there. Joel Edmondson, not an analytic darling, but in this game, pretty good rating. In net, James Reimer is your starter. Not the best, but not the worst in the tournament. Saskatchewan is up next, repping Gordy Howe's old team. Um, offense here, pretty basic, not a lot of flashy stuff, but good enough to hold it down. Defense, again, same kind of story, like good enough, but nothing flashy. In net, Darcy Kemper and Braden Holpe are going to have to steal a couple of games from him. Kemper was unbelievable this year, but of course, Holpe's got that rating advantage. It's not every day you get to live a childhood dream, and today is not that day, so Team Ontario will be the Senators. Overall, this is like your all-star team of the tournament. Like that, that is like, you could make this like Team Canada and people would say, yeah, those are all fair roster choices. Defense, same kind of story. Like just great talent all around. And that Jordan Bingington is their starter. And that's kind of where the team falls off a bit. I mean, he's a great starter in this game, but still we saw in real life, he struggled against the Vancouver Canucks, like struggled, struggled. Quebec is a young, improving team. Pierre-Luc Dubois has been really bringing it in Columbus. Yanni Gordon, Tampa. You got a lot of good young talent, a lot of good mix of veterans. Offense could be a bit better. On defense, we got the same story. Thomas Shabbat, Samuel Girard, great young players. And then you mix them with great veterans like Latang, Vlasic, and Savard. Love the defense. In net, you got a great tandem of Corey Crawford and Marc-Andre Fleury. Quebec looking solid as always. Nova Scotia, they got Crosby, they got Marchand, they got McKinnon, and uh, that's kind of about it. You know, this is a team that they just made the roster requirements, and they're going to do the best they can. Defense is kind of even worse, but Ryan Graves and Jarek McIsaac are going to be a really solid top pairing in a couple years. Um, in that, Mason McDonald and Trace Marchand. Um, best of luck to you two. You guys are going to be facing a lot of shots. Our final team of the tournament is Team Rest of Canada, taking a page out of the World Cup of Hockey, and we got a team made up of every province that could not field a full roster. Um, Zach McEwen, Dylan Cozen, like you got some NHL players on there, but uh, not too many, and Cozen's still in junior, but probably he's gonna get called up soon. Defense is a bit better. You got Noah Dobson and Myers, two really good prospects. Um, Brandon Gormley used to be a pretty good player. Morgan Ellis was a pretty good prospect at one point, but yeah, defense is kind of weak. In that, Jake Allen, this is all up to you, man. You got to get them some saves. 
you gotta get them going far in this tournament. Uh, just so people can say I rigged it for the bad team again. Bring back those memories. Round one! Game one, British Columbia taking on Manitoba. This game started off pretty even, both teams with a lot of great chances. The second period would be all Manitoba though, and that would lead to the first goal of the game after Travis Zajac delivers the goods, well being laid out. That lead wouldn't last for long though, as Barzell would tie it for BC. That tie would be even shorter as right off the faceoff, Mark Stone slicing and dicing at the middle to give Manitoba the lead back. BC not out though, as Johansson buries BC's second goal of the period. And BC continues their attack, Barzell notching his second. Their first lead is short-lived though as multiple-time cup champ Jonathan Taves ties it up. No winner can be decided in regulation and in overtime, the hat trick for Matthew Barzell. He wins it for BC. They move on to the second round. Game 2, Alberta taking on the boys from Saskatchewan. Hall would open this one early, not even a minute in. Not too long later, Kirby Deck adds another to extend their lead. That would be all that was needed. Alberta moves on. Game 3, first of the Eastern side, Ontario versus the rest of Canada. Yes, this was ugly, McDavid less than a minute in scores, then Stamkos just over a minute in. 2 nothing before 2 minutes, they would add 2 more, but an easy win for Team Ontario, they move on, 4 nothing win. Game 4, the last one of the first round is here and Sidney Crosby puts his team on the back with a great play to Marchand. This team will go as far as he takes them. Philip Deneau with a nice little breakaway to tie it at 1. Quebec then starts the second strong. Jonathan Huberto putting it past the Nova Scotian goaltender. Minute left in the second and O'Brien gets alone in front and knows what to do. 2-2 two -two after 2. Then Luke Green with a golden goal off of a faceoff. Nova Scotia moves on. Quebec goes from a finalist to eliminate it in round 1. Round 2 First game of the semifinals and we got BC taking on Alberta. BC starts this one strong with Johansson bearing another goal. Great tournament for him so far. Alberta fires right back though to tie it at 1. But just a few minutes later, Barzell would return the favor to give BC a 2-1 lead for the first. In the second, Nujip Hopkins tucks this one in so nicely it's got a full 8 hours of sleep and extends the BC lead to 2. British Columbia kept the foot on the gas and Kyle Turris buries this one top shelf and gives them a 3 goal lead. And that would be all they need. BC advances to the Poutine Cup Finals for the second time. Second game of the semifinals are Nova Scotia's hands long enough to box with God as they take on Ontario. Sagan gets Ontario on the board first after a feed in the slot. Nova Scotia surviving and thriving and tying as Matthew Highmore puts them on the board. It's getting close to midnight though as Mark Shifley scores from the top of the slot to give Ontario back the lead. Almost halfway through the third. With just under 10 to go though, Shane Bowers would put Nova Scotia back in it. To overtime we go as midnight strikes and it is over for Nova Scotia. Ontario takes it, moves on to the finals. 3-2 final, their third straight finals appearance. For the second time in Poutine Cup history, it is BC versus Ontario in the finals. We go now with two Titans taking on each other. Evander Kane gets BC on the board first. Ottawa though would not let up and continue to try and put pressure on BC, but then Brett Connolly scores on his own rebound to extend the lead to two. New Japakings would repeat the feat, make it 3-0 just over halfway through the second. Less than a minute later, Nuge would do it again, making it 4 nothing. How about one more time, Nuge again, a quick natural hat trick and a 5 nothing lead. A familiar sight for Jordan Bingington as he struggles against the team in a Canucks uniform and he gets pulled after Matthew Barzell makes it 6-0 for BC late in the second. Stamkos would ruin the shutout and Sagan would add one more, but it is over. Vancouver is your 2020 Poutine Cup champions for the second time in Poutine Cup history and the first double time champions. Congrats to BC. Hey, thank you for watching. It feels good to be back. It was fun to do the Poutine Cup again. Um, I wish I had the time or, well, um, could go out in public right now, not because of COVID, um, to actually make the Poutine Cup physical again, but things aren't allowing. It was fun to kind of see how all the rosters have changed. You know, there's still the goaltending problems in Canada, but you're seeing a lot of great young talent now, especially kind of in like more weird places. Like I'm really, I really hope I can do this every year just to see where that team rest of Canada goes. You know, maybe somewhere like Prince Edward Island um, can maybe get their own team in this in a couple years, you know? But yeah, so it was fun to do. I plan on making videos again. Um, no going to be a concrete schedule. I'll talk about it more in an update video soon. But again, if you watched this far, thank you again for watching. Polis Thrasher is back. 
you have a good one.